place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Good morning and happy new year. My name is Jill Willis and I am your worship leader. This is John Woodall and John Biggers. You can see we've moved around a little bit. Uh, we thought we would help transition us from Christmas into Epiphany and New Year's. So this morning we are so blessed and happy that we have Corey uh, Millette preaching for us. The name of her sermon is Press Onward, so appropriate for this new year time. If you are ready to worship and you have your candle, go ahead and light it. We're so glad you're with us. Let's worship together. You are here moving in our I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you. 
stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working Stop!
to see your kingdom come. Thank you, Jesus. You set me free. Christ, my Savior, rescue Friends, as we continue in worship, now is our opportunity to reflect upon all that God has given to us. And then in response, we then get to share the love of God, the grace of God, and the peace of Christ to others. So may the peace of Jesus Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. <laughs> may the peace of the Christ child be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. The peace of Christ be with you and everyone always. Friends, as we continue in this time of worship, do have just a few announcements to share with you all this morning. Again, let me add my welcome to the one that Jill shared earlier, especially to those of you who may be guests with us today. And we would certainly love to have the opportunity to get to know you a little bit uh, better. And to that end, we invite you to go to our website, matthewsumc.org, Click on the Connect tab, and please do fill out the Guest Connection form. Um, that will allow uh, us the opportunity to share some more information um, with you about the church, and do take some time there to, to get to know us as well. Friends, we hope all of you will take some time and subscribe to our Friday Celebration News, where you will be able to find our most comprehensive list of upcoming events and announcements. And again, all of this can be found by going to matthewsumc.org and clicking on the Connect tab. 
And we certainly don't want any of you to miss our times of worship together. So if you haven't done so, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash MatthewsUMC, and set your notifications to occur just before our 9.30 and 11 o'clock services. There you can share comments in the comments section. Uh, You can also view our worship services on demand and on Facebook. Friends, if you've not already done so, please do take a moment to, uh, to let us know who's worshiping with us. You can do that by going to our Sunday morning email, uh, by listing the names of those that are worshiping with you in the comments section or from our website. Friends, what a gift it is for us to, uh, to remember as we begin this new year that we have a God who is among us. Indeed, we have been in the season of celebrating Emmanuel, God with us. And it's to that God that we offer our prayers. So I invite all of us now to join as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, we worship you this morning as the giver of all things new and good. Your word instructs us that every good and perfect gift is from above. We believe this is still true today. And God, we thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for giving us the gift of life and for providing for all of our needs. Thank you for giving us the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. And thank you as well for giving us the gift of fellowship with you and with each other. So in response to these wonderful gifts and in response to who you are, we've come to worship you this morning. Lord, there is nothing more important for us to do than to worship or to praise you. Today's a day when we celebrate a new year. It's a day for us to reflect on the past, but it is also a time for us to consider the potential of the future. It's an opportunity for us to consider new beginnings, new beginnings perhaps in damaged relationships or in ministry commitments or in personal disciplines, in time with our family, and if needed, to reconsider our relationship with you. Help us to begin this year with hopeful hearts, anticipating the good that you can do in the world through us. Help us to remain open to new opportunities that you might indeed bring our way. God, amidst the hope that comes with a new year and with all the opportunities that it brings, We do realize that there are many among us who may find themselves in uncertain times. We're aware that there are many who may have struggles at work or who may even be currently without work. We know that there are some who are dealing with sickness or disease or have a loved one who is. We know that some continue to grieve the loss of a dear friend or family member. God, we pray that whatever the situation that whatever uncertainty may exist, that your presence would be known bringing comfort and a peace in a way that is only possible through you. God, we believe that you are alive and at work in the world. We believe that in this new year, you bring new life, new opportunities, and new hope. We thank you for allowing us to partner with you as you make yourself known to all the earth. Help us to follow you more faithfully as we daily grow in our knowledge and in our relationship with you. And we pray these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we now move to a time in our uh, worship where those who consider Matthew's United Methodist Church to be your spiritual home can extend your tithes and your special offerings to God. Friends, because you give, we are able to approach 2021 in hope, in hope knowing that together with one another and with God, we can share the good news through words and through deeds to those here in our own church, in our own community, and indeed throughout the world. So friends, as you give, give joyfully and give generously. Do know that you can continue to send checks uh, here to the the church, but you can also take advantage of our Realm platform as well and make your uh, contributions digitally. Thank you for your generosity.
can go back to the beginning can control what tomorrow will bring but I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be not enough unless you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Light the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness, your glory appears.
Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of Philippians, the third chapter, verses 10 through 14, and is being read from the Common English Bible version. The righteousness that I have comes from knowing Christ, the power of his resurrection, and the participation in his sufferings. It includes being conformed to his death, so that I may perhaps reach the goal of the resurrection of the dead. It's not that I've already reached this goal or have already been perfected, but I pursue it so that I may grab hold of it because Christ grabbed hold of me for just this purpose. Brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. My name is Corey Millette, and I have the privilege of being one of the pastors here at Matthews United Methodist Church. And wherever you are worshiping with us this morning, I welcome you. My prayer for you during this time of worship is that you will feel loved beyond a shadow of a doubt more than anything in your life, that you will feel the Spirit of God moving in and through you today. If you would, before we go in our time of the message, I would love the chance to pray for us. So let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this time that we can be in worship together today. God, I pray over the words of Scripture that were read for us. And I pray, Father God, that it might be new words for us. Words that would just permeate through all areas of our life. And God, I pray your blessing upon this message. God, may these words I speak give wisdom, give strength, and give encouragement. And so, Father God, be with us now and always. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. You know, in all honesty, I can't help but start this message being curious as to if you are sad that 2020 is over. Man, 2020, it sure did wear me out, as I'm sure it did for many of you as well. You see, 2020, well, it was certainly a unique year. It was filled with many global, local, and personal challenges for all of us. You see, we saw progress made in certain areas, but then there was certainly setbacks in others. But the good news, friends, is that we are here we are in a brand new year. 2021 has officially arrived and a chance for a fresh start and to set some new goals and make some changes that will hopefully improve our lives over these next 12 months is finally here. Now today, today is the first Sunday of the new year and I have found that there are typically two approaches that happen when a new year arrives. And so I thought I might illustrate that for you this morning. So, for example, how many of you who are with us in worship this morning, how many of you would say that you enjoy making New Year's resolutions? Now, I know that there are some of you out there who are watching worship this morning, and, and you're saying, New Year's resolutions? Really? My resolution is to not make a New Year's resolution. You see, I have found that when it comes to the new year, generally speaking, there are basically two groups of people. They are what I like to call the dreamers and the realists. Now, I know that you know exactly who you are when I said that. You could clearly identify as a dreamer or a realist. You see, as we come into the new year, here are things that the dreamers talk about when they speak about a new year. They see th say things like, man, this is my year. This is going to be a phenomenal year. We're going to go here and we're going to do this. And it's just going to be great. We're going to accomplish so much. To which the realists say, you said that last year. You know, you said that last year, right? The dreamers and the realists, well, 
they just look at the new year very differently. Now, there's no right or wrong, whether you're a dreamist or a realist. It's just how we are actually wired. Now, something that is crucial for all of us, whether a dreamer or a realist, is that we must see a new year with immense and massive possibility. You see, possibility, well, it is what fuels the potential for a better future. Possibility fuels the potential for a better year for all of us. And possibility, well, it fuels the potential for a better you and a better me. Whether you are someone who typically makes a resolution or not, the new year, well, it brings about a natural opportunity, well, for all of us to take stock of our lives. A time to look back over the previous year and have the chance to dream and vision for the year that is to come. A new year, well, it just brings incredible opportunity to assess whether or not we are truly living the abundant, rich, and beautiful life that God has for each and every one of us. And as a year like 2020 comes to a close, I don't think any of us want to miss a moment of the abundant life that God has for each of us. Now, I thought I might share with you some of the most common New Year's resolutions that I'm sure we have all heard. Some of them are to become more physically fit or to improve our financial condition. Maybe it's to lose weight and to improve our health or to improve family relationships in our life. Maybe for some of us, it's to do more volunteer work or, or possibly to change our overall attitude. And you may be thinking, well, gosh, these are pretty good resolutions. Maybe these are some of the resolutions I'd like to take for myself. And, and they are good resolutions. You see, there's nothing wrong with improving our physical or mental health. There's nothing wrong with improving the relationships in our life. And there's certainly nothing wrong with volunteering more. All of these are good things for us to strive to improve in our life. But what I'm wondering about today is... Do any of those things really matter in the end? You see, most of our resolutions, well, they're only designed to make us slightly better. They're only designed to take what we already are and fine-tune it, maybe remodel it just a bit. Things like, I resolve to lose 20 pounds so that I can just look a little slimmer. Or, I resolve to stop smoking so that I could be a little bit healthier. Or maybe it's, I resolve to control my temper so that I can just be a little bit nicer. Now, do not get me wrong. These resolutions are okay, but but what I'm wondering is if these resolutions are what God would have us make. Is his goal for us by this time at the end of 2021 to just be slightly improved Is his goal for us that by this time next year we would be the same old person just maybe finely tuned and those rough edges smoothed out just a bit? The truth is, friends, I I don't. I don't believe that that is what God wants for any of us. The truth is he is out to do something entirely different with our lives, something far beyond minor renovations. You see, God wants to make us completely new, not just slightly better version of who we are right now. There is a businessman in London named Lindsey Craig who told a story of a warehouse property that he was selling. You see, the building had been empty for months and and needed some repairs. There were damaged doors and smashed windows and strewn trash all about the interior. And as he showed a prospective buyer the property, Clegg took pain to say that he would replace the broken windows, that he would bring in a crew to correct any structural damage, and and that he would clean out all of the garbage. But the buyer said, forget about the repairs. You see, when I buy this place, I'm going to build something completely different. I don't want the building. I want the site. Now, compared with the renovations that God has in mind, our efforts to improve our lives are, are truly trivial as, as sweeping the warehouse slate for this wrecking ball to come in. 
When we become gods, you see, our old life, well, it is completely over. He makes all things new, friends. And God, what he wants is is the sight and the permission to build something beautiful for you on it. If we're going to act resolutely, if we are going to be firmly determined, if we are going to set a course of action, then we should do it for something that will make great and lasting changes in our life. I ask you today, why waste time and energy on slight improvements when we can actually invest in becoming something new and beautiful, brand new? See, God's not interested in throwing a coat of paint on us. He's not interested in doing a little bit of remodeling. Because you see, paint, well, it fades and it chips, and remodels, well, they become outdated over time. God is looking to do a whole new thing for you. And we need simply to resolve to give him the permission to tear down the building and to rebuild on the site. See, God is looking to work wonders in and through each and every one of us. And we need simply to resolve to put ourselves in his hands and let God go to work. There's this great old story about a little boy who went out into the field wearing his baseball cap. And in one hand, he carried a baseball. And in the other hand, he had his baseball bat. His face showed tremendous confidence as he marched out onto the field. And bringing his bat back, he tossed the ball up into the air and saying, I'm the greatest batter in the world. He took a swing and he completely missed. Strike one, he said. Well, then he picked up the ball, he examined it, and he decided to throw it up into the air again. And as he swung, he shouted, I am the greatest batter in the entire world. And once again, he missed. Strike two, he said. Well, this time he stopped to examine his bat to make sure that there wasn't a hole in the bat that the ball was flying through every time he swung. But no hole, so then he decided to pick up the ball. He adjusted his cap, and he tossed that ball into the air for the third time, and he repeated again, I am the greatest batter in the entire world. And he swung with all of his might, and he missed for the third time. And that young boy, well, he shouted, Wow, what a pitcher! I'm the greatest pitcher in all of the world. You see, friends, as we look back over these last 12 months, I'm not quite sure whether you would consider yourself the greatest pitcher or the greatest batter. But one thing for sure is that at times we have all struck out. And I wonder this morning, what it is that you are eagerly anticipating for 2021. Are you filled with enthusiasm as you look forward, eagerly waiting to see what each day will bring for you? Or are you filled with a sense of dread and are you worried what this year will bring? And maybe it will be worse than the year before. Well, like that little boy with the bat... May I suggest to you this morning that our attitude, our our frame of mind, our, our reactions to events, well, it largely determines whether this year will be a year of victory or a year of defeat. The Apostle Paul was never one to be to allow his circumstances to conquer him. Rather, with the help of God, he was determined to win the victor's crown. In the book of Philippians chapter 3 that we read this morning, I have always been encouraged and gotten the sense that Paul is reflecting on life and wants to encourage us to do the same thing with our own. He wants us to be a people that God designed us to be, to be able to reach our full God-like potential that is created to great fullness. So I want you to hear again these words from Paul. Listen to his attitude, his dedication, and his great determination that shines through in the words found in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. 
But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You see, with Paul's words fresh on our mind, I would like to suggest for you a few things that might help us uh, to live the best year that we can in 2021. First is that I think we need to recognize the value of time. Have you ever actually stopped and wondered a little bit about time? How do you value one year? Well, I ask you, maybe ask a student who failed a grade. Or maybe how do you value one month? I encourage you to ask a mother whose baby arrived prematurely. How maybe do you value one week? Well, editors of newspapers, well, will they know and they understand? How do you maybe value one hour? Well, ask someone who lies terminally ill, waiting for their loved one who is running late. How maybe, friends, do you value one minute? Well, ask that person who just missed their plane or train. How then do we value one second? We'll ask an Olympic medalist or someone who just nearly missed an accident. Well, of course, we know that time, well, it is a human invention. I'm convinced that God doesn't wear a, a wrist watch or, or use a calendar. You see, the Bible says, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. You see, friends, God deals with eternity, and therefore time is just not an important factor with him. But time, well, it is important to us because we live in a limited time frame. We begin with infancy, and then we go on to adolescence, and then to adulthood, and then middle age, and then old age, and to everything that follows after that. We measure life in these segments of time. Now, what makes this time so valuable? Well, oftentimes, what makes something valuable is scarcity. If there is scarcity, then that product quickly escalates in its value. So if something is rare, it is usually valuable. But what if we had a lot of it? Well, then it loses its value. And the same thing, friends, is true about time. Now, maybe that explains this generation gap that happens in regards to time. Young people feel like they have plenty of time, and so therefore time loses its value, and they aren't too concerned about wasting it or squandering it away. On the other hand, as we get up in our years, we begin to realize that time, well, it's becoming rarer, and therefore it is more valuable to us. I ran across some interesting facts a few years ago where someone went through all the trouble to do some research about what people do with their time, and they came up with these results. So if we live to be 75, most of us will have spent three solid years, 24 hours and a day, acquiring an education, grade school, high school, and college. We will have spent seven years eating, 24 hours a day, some less and some more, obviously. We will have spent 14 years, day and night, working. We will have spent five years riding in automobiles or airplanes. We'll have spent five years talking with each other, some more and some less, will have spent one year sick or recovering from sickness. And get this, we'll have spent 24 years of our life sleeping. We will have spent three years reading books and magazines and newspapers and online blogs and podcasts. And 12 years amusing ourselves by watching TV or going to the movies or fishing or whatever your favorite hobby might be. And as I looked at these statistics, I began to think, let's suppose that you spent 
every Sunday of your life for 75 years through infancy, childhood, and adult age, and then old age right here in God's house worshiping. Now, if you did that, how much time do you think you would have spent worshiping God? Well, the answer, friends, it's quite startling. The answer is less than five and a half months. So for fun, let's double that because I know that all of us, we always attend church. We never miss a Sunday, not in our entire life. So let's say that makes 11 months for each of us. Just think about that. We would have spent five years in an automobile and just 11 months in worship. Twelve years amusing ourselves in front of the television, but just 11 months in worship. And that's just if we always attend church and never missed. You see, that tells us a little bit about the brevity of time. And it also tells us something about the priorities that many of us have in our lives. The Bible teaches us that life, well, it is truly uncertain. Time is like a valuable commodity in a very precious and delicate vessel. It might break at any moment, friends, and we could lose it all. So we have this moment. We have this opportunity. We don't have anything about the future. We have this moment. And that is all that we really have in our life is a moment. And we must truly take advantage of the time that we have been given. The second thing that I believe that Paul teaches us in this Philippians passage is that we should not be bound in bondage to our past. We are special beings in that God has given us the ability to remember. Your memory may be your friend or possibly your greatest enemy. When you remember, hopefully you'll remember some very pleasant things about this past year But chances are that you'll also remember some of the negative and difficult things as you look back. In fact, sometimes we dwell upon the negative and, well, we begin to feel sorry for ourselves. Maybe this past year was a time of transition in your life. The kids grew up. Maybe they got married and left home. And you're now trying to deal with this empty nest syndrome. Maybe your job came to an end and you're having a tough time making ends meet right now. Maybe a loved one passed away and you're trying to deal with the lingering grief and loneliness that you feel. Maybe it was a time when sin got a real hold of you in your life. And you're now feeling the burden and the guilt of that sin and those choices. You see, those things, well, they can truly cripple us. And they can hold us in the bondage of the past. And I believe that is why Paul said, forgetting what is behind us. Paul had a lot to forget, friends. Paul had a very shaky past. He even persecuted Christians in the church. And he used his authority to kill them. But by his own admission, he says in 1 Timothy 1, verse 15, I am the chief of sinners. If Paul was short of perfection, how far do you think you and I might be? He could have walked around his whole life with tremendous burden of guilt crippling him, and he would have never had the chance to become the great apostle that we know and love today. But you see, Paul said, forgetting what is behind. In other words, God, I commit it to you. I seek your forgiveness, God, for all of the sins of my past, and I am choosing to look forward to what lies ahead. And right now, I am going to live today the best that I truly can. And friends, I believe that that is good advice for all of us from the Apostle Paul. The next thing that Paul teaches us in this Philippians passage is that we need to establish a priority in our lives. You see, finally, I think that we need to establish this priority. Paul says, this one thing I do. Now, Paul obviously did more than one thing. 
He made tents, he preached sermons, and he established churches, friends. He even healed the sick, he wrote books, he did a lot of different things. But he said these words, the top priority in my life is to press on, to press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me onward in, in Jesus Christ. A while back, you see there was this expert on the subject of time management that was speaking to a group of business students. And after speaking to them for a while, he said, Okay, friends, time for a quiz. He set a one-gallon wide-mouth mason jar on the table in front of him. Then he produced about a dozen fist-sized rocks, and he carefully placed each one of them one at a time inside the mason jar. Now, when the jar was filled to the top and no more rocks could fit inside, he asked them, is this jar full? Well, of course, every student in the class said, well, yes. Really? The teacher replied. So then he reached under the table and he pulled out a bucket of gravel. He dumped some of the gravel into the jar and he shook it. Because pieces of gravel then began to work themselves down into the spaces between the big rocks. Then he smiled and he asked the group once more, Is this jar full? Well, by this time, of course, the class had begun to catch on. And and so they said to him, Probably not. And one said, Well, I guess not. Not. He said, good, good, I'm glad that you're catching on. And so then the teacher reached under the table and he brought out a bucket of sand. And he started dumping sand into this jar and it filled all of the spaces between the rocks and even the gravel. And once more he asked, is this jar full? No, the class shouted. And again, the teacher said, good. Then he grabbed a pitcher of water, and he began to pour the water until the jar was filled up to the brim. Then he looked back at the class, and he asked them, what is the point of this illustration? One of the students, well, he raised his hand, and he said, the point is, no matter how full your schedule is, if you try really hard, you can always fit something else into it. No, the teacher shouted, that's not the point at all. The truth is, is that this illustration teaches us something so much more. And he said, if you don't put the big rocks in first, you'll never get the rest in. So I ask you this morning, what are the big rocks of your life? I wonder if they include things like each day drawing nearer to God. Or spending time with God in prayer. Or maybe it's remembering to seek God for guidance in your life by reading his holy word. Friends, maybe we need to remember the big rocks in our life and that those are our solid foundation. That God is our foundation that we must put in first or nothing else will fit in. It was Jesus who said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. As with all resolutions, the choice, well, it is ours. We can settle for minor repairs which make us look and maybe feel a little bit better. We can settle to try to act resolutely with using our own strength. Perhaps we can make it to February or March before we say, well, gosh, that didn't go so well. I guess I'll try again next year. Or, friends, we have the chance to get serious right now today. We could resolve to let God tear down our old selves and to rebuild us into something completely new and wonderful. We could let God speak to us work in us and through us. And as we meet him weekly in church, together we, our brothers and sisters, well, we can meet him daily in our lives, 
daily in his word as we read the Bible. We can walk in his thoughts, encounter his visions, and we will dream these incredible dreams for our lives every single day of our lives. And friends, we can constantly be with him in prayer. We can live in a steady, growing relationship with him. God is looking for a site, and he's looking for your permission to build something incredible, something amazing. And I ask you this morning, are you available? So as you press onward into 2021, let this be the year, friends. Let this be the time that you resolve to give God permission to build something amazing in and through you. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we give you so much thanks for who you are and who you have created us to be. God, I pray that right now in this morning, this morning we will just kneel humbly at your feet and we will say yes to being available to giving you the chance to work in and through our lives. That you can repair the brokenness, that you can heal the pain that you can give us the strength and the encouragement that we need to press on and move forward in 2021. So, Father God, bless us all. Be with us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Friends, I hope you have prepared the bread and juice or the elements that you might share in the sacrament of communion on this first Sunday in the year of 2021 on January the 3rd. So I appreciate you having those with you. Let me invite you to prepare yourself and to bow your heads and your hearts as I lead us in the great thanksgiving. Would you pray with me? May the Lord be with each and every one of us and with us all. Lift up your hearts to our God and give our thanks and our praise. Eternal God, before time, you created the heavens and you created the stars that would one day help us to chart our course. You formed the earth and crafted all the creatures, the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea. In your own timing, you formed us in your image. You gave us minds to create, hands to plan, and hearts to love. You gave us a sense of your presence, and you asked us to listen for your still, small voice. You called us to be happy and whole and full of your love throughout all of our life. And so with all those who have ever taken time to seek you and to listen for your voice, we join together to praise you and give you thanks and praise, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself our light and our salvation. And in every age and throughout all the world, you have led your people from far places to that same light. On the night in which Jesus invited us into this new way of living, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. When the supper was over, he took also a cup of wine, the Messiah's cup of salvation, never to be touched until the Messiah himself arrived and celebrated the Passover with his disciples. It was that cup that he lifted, and in remembrance of him, the cup we lift this morning is the sharing in the blood of Christ, a sharing in the new covenant. Drink this and remember Christ. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we come now to offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as both a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim now together the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out now, holy God, your spirit on those of us gathered here and on this bread and cup. Inspire us with your Holy Spirit that we might take time Help those who are in need around us. And in this new year, to use Matthew's United Methodist Church to make all things new for our community and our world. Now, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one in ministry with one another, 
and one in ministry to all the world in your name until Christ comes to be with us and everyone feasts at his new heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, both now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to take the elements that you've received, if you did not already do that, to drink the juice and to consume the bread, to know that that represents for you the presence of Christ in those elements and with you. So as you've consumed those, as you've reconciled yourself to Christ, know that he is present with you and will be with you not only today in these elements, but tomorrow and every day that stretches out before you. So would you now receive these elements and be blessed. Amen. So we've done the song many times, but it's because we love it so much, not just to sing, but about how we feel about you all out there who are not here in front of us today. We miss you all so much. We just want to put a blessing on your lives. And that's all the song talks about is not just blessing us or blessing you, but blessing your families and your children for futures to come. So we hope this song blesses you, and we can't wait to see you again soon. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you he is for you, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you.
Friends, having now received these elements of bread and juice, to receive the reconciliation, the forgiveness that God offers to us when God comes near in these means of grace, let me invite you to bow your heads for God's word of blessing and benediction as we end our time together. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you again for all of our blessings, for all the hope that lies ahead of us in this year that is yet to come. It's a year yet to be written, but we know that when it is written, we want it to be by your hand, and we want to be right there with you following each and every day. So God, forgive us all that we will do in the coming year. Reconcile us always to you. Always be near to us that we might draw our strength from you in Christ's name and for his sake as we leave and go forth into the world, one people, now and forever. Amen. We're grateful that you're here with us at Matthews United Methodist, and we hope you feel deeply blessed by our time together. We invite you to join us again next Sunday on Facebook or YouTube or in one of our many services. Be sure to connect with our life-changing ministries on our website as well. Thanks.